Hello everyone, I'm David from Beastie Geeks and today we are going to look into Solomon Kane from Mythic Games. The moment me and Greg saw the game on Kickstarter over two years ago, we were attracted by the lore, by the dark theme, uh, of course by the miniatures, and most over by the promise of a incredible story-driven game. A few days ago, game arrived, the core game arrived to our home, and let's say the career guy barely fit both boxes into our door because <laughs> the size of them and the wave of them is massive, especially considering this is just the corporate pledge of the game. We have just finished two campaigns from this pledge, the Rattle Bones, and Houted Mountain. And I think it's the perfect time to share with you our honest thoughts about the game and if Salon K met our expectations. If you know other games so much story-driven like Solomon Kane, let us know in the comment section. And meanwhile, let's find out what we think about the game. Let's start with the strongest point of the game, its immersion and narration. Solomon Kane is entirely based on the works of Robert E. Howard and it shows and feels construction of sentences, attention to every word, brilliant, very natural dialogues between characters, supernatural yet still believable situations, stimulating descriptions and sudden turnovers. This game has everything and more we expect when it comes to a story and narration in board games. The atmosphere created by the game is so immersive and engaging not only because of the awesome texts, but also thanks to all of the components creating one big, cohesive, addictive world of Solomon Kane. Mechanics here are very different from what we get used to and a rulebook with some confusing fragments will not make it easier for you to get into the game. It's even highly possible that during your first session some things will not have much sense for you and you will not feel gameplay within Salomon Kane at all. But the game shines when you get all of the rules properly and the devil is hidden in the nuances here. The unorthodox approach results in the fact that not only you have one hero on board, despite the number of players, but you also do not manage Solomon directly. Instead of this, you will use virtues, angel beings who cannot intervene in Solomon Kane's life too directly, but can slightly inspire him to do certain actions. Saying this, we have justice, lightening Solomon's journey and allowing him to talk to others. We have courage, helping Solomon find, keep the darkness in the bay, and inspire other virtues. We have temperance, easy exploration, and prudence, working closely with other virtues, helping them to exceed their abilities. This whole idea of the virtues influencing and motivating Solomon represents battle in Cain's mind. And also because of this, the pace of the game is slow. After playing dozens of fast-paced classic crawlers, it's hard at the beginning to appreciate how Solomon Kane often focuses just on a few seconds of his life. One chapter is entirely based on just one conversation with another character. But the way you can guide this conversation and all of the glimpses and moments deciding about your life are written and designed in a magical way. Another things we are not fans in the first place are chapter named stories, where your only task is to accumulate enough light to lighten Solomon Kane's path. Firstly, the connotation was annoying slumpers from Etherfields, but after several stories we get their purpose. Besides adding other pages to the plot, they serve as midpoints between scene chapters with miniatures and stuff. Midpoints during you should awarely decide if you prefer to lose them on purpose to strengthen your virtues for the upcoming challenges or try to lighten the path as much as possible to get as many bonuses uh, as you can get. To summarize, at the beginning we felt a bit 
repulsive towards some mechanics, but after understanding rules properly and using all the nuances the game has to offer, we truly enjoy every, even the tiniest mechanic within the game. They are different, but they all work great, not only separately, but they are also cleverly connected with each other. As we said during the intro, we only finished two campaigns so far and we do not know if developers have managed to stay creative with every book and chapter. So far they kept us insanely engaged, keeping us in the illusion of Solomon's Cain world the whole time. Let's hope the next scenarios will stay diverse enough to support this unorthodox, slow pace gameplay and mechanics we love. At the beginning I was complaining a lot about the lack of the development. You do not upgrade the cards of your virtues. You do not collect items. But after losing the first campaign three times in a row, I realized the power of each skill virtues have and the fact that even the smallest handicap can save your life. Classic development has been replaced by donating and resolving dices, getting luck and mercy cubes, acquiring blessings, uh, making often sacrifices, and boosting your virtues with life. This approach is definitely different, but it works and makes Solomon Kane standing out from the crowd once again. Minis here are so good that I have true goosebumps during the unboxing. Attention to details, all those ornaments, fabrics, accessories, even bases are so well done that I'm surprised Mythic Games put so much effort in this. Of course the most magnificent are virtues, but each humanoid within a game together with Solomon Kane is outstanding. Not mentioning another version of Solomon where he and other guys ride horses and hold lanterns at the same time. The rest of the components are grand as well, and the only thing I would correct are quite dull colors on the terrain boards together with, the, with those clumsy outlines. Because of the colors, it is hard to appreciate how detailed and climatic boards are. And sometimes those outlines, especially the red ones, look like clicked and highlighted elements in a video RPG game. It's hard to expect high replayability from story-driven games. To be honest, we even prefer such games to be one-shot only. With so many titles on the market, we simply want an awesome long experience and then move on to the next game. So low replayability is something we expected with Solomon Kane, and it's not a con for us. But what bothers us is the fact that on many occasions, scenarios outcomes are almost the same, with the same text and story. For example, no matter if you succeed or failed in the first chapter of the Rattling Bones campaign, the outcomes will be identical, with the difference of some small boost for the next chapter. It's very common practice here, and it's shame that outcomes haven't different texts, because reading them is a pure pleasure. Some extra mode where you can use all means and components in some skirmish or sandbox mode would be nice. We know Solomon Kane is entirely not about such things, but still, the lack of possibility to use all those amazing means in some free play mode is just a waste. The game seems to work best with both solo and two players at the table. Solo players are going to be very spoiled with several options on how you can play the game. You can use all four virtues actively. You can use only a few of them actively and have the rest in the reserve. And up to this you get one extra virtue designed solely for solo mode. Providence combines powers of other virtues into one. And although she seems very overpowered because of that, you're gonna find yourself in situations when having only one virtue, no matter how strong, is very challenging. Playing the game in duo is fun as well. Unfortunately, we can't use Providence, but what you can get is another person at the table with whom you can experience the whole story, discuss choices, plan your movements together, and interact with each other a lot. Solomon Kane requires plenty of interaction between players and without very smooth cooperation and a lot of talking above the table, you can easily fail the whole scenario. If your gaming group is not best in collaborating and thinking as the collective, 
or one of the players has the player alpha syndrome, you could find Solomon Kane far less engaging. You're gonna fall in love with this game or you're gonna pass it after the first approach. The game is so unique, it is simply hard to remain indifferent to it. As you might have guessed from this review, we fall for Solomon Kane completely. Even if Solomon Kane is the king in its narrow category of strongly story-driven board games, we are not blind to some flaws, which could be avoided with some extra effort. Saying this, we score Solomon Kane for 8.5 scratches on 10 possible, and the game gets our mark of recognition. If you are mad about story-driven games with super strong narration and atmosphere, Watch some gameplays online. If you find mechanics and specific pace of the game sufficient or even interesting, Solomon Kane should be something you're gonna love too. That's all for today. See you at the next game and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.